Okay. This will look yucky. This is called mathematical induction. And half of it initially is going, I don't know what that means. So the first bit, I want to try and get your head around what that looks like, what it means. I'm going to take this little bit here and write it differently. So this thing here describes the turn of a sequence. You don't have to write it down because guess what I'm recording. So, let's go term one. What do you think the first term would be in the sequence? Term one, n is one, what's three minus four? Six minus four? What sort of sequence is it? Arithmetic? Are we adding three? So that's going to be an arithmetic sequence. So it's just a sequence that's described by that relationship. Um, remember in combined A up, x bar equals sum of x on n, sigma, sigma. Sum of all. So this stands for sum of all terms. So in, I suppose, series form, I'm looking at S of n. And we have a rule for that, and yes, we could find it, but that's not the point. We want to use a different proof for it. So if there's only We won't use a rule. I'm just going to say, let's add up all of the first numbers in the sequence. Well, there's only one first number, so it's negative one plus number. The sum of two is that plus that, which is one. Sum of three. Is that plus that plus that, so that's seven minus one. Sum of four? Yeah, so it's gonna be 14. Okay. Someone has, who, who really likes patterns has worked out that rather than just using the rule, there's a, a shortcut to get there in, in this terminology. So let's go, this is the rule. So n is one. What's one on two? Three times one minus five. What's three minus five? Times, oh, divided by two? It's one. One on two, three minus um, let's go to six. Six minus five. What have I, what have I done? One, two, one, two, seven, seven. Two, one, two, thank you. And is two. So that's one. Three. So n is three. Three on two. Three, three is a nine minus five. Nine minus five is four. Four, three is a twelve. Twelve divided by two. Yeah. So we, we get the situation where this is the shortcut to work out what I'm, at, what I'm going to do to add up. And yes, we could do it by using a series, but these patterns get harder and harder. So just like when we do adding and subtracting in grade one and two, we start with something really easy, and then all of a sudden go into negative numbers and do something harder. So let's start with these. So this thing here, all it says is that well, it proposes that the sum of all terms from the first term to, well, however far we go, we'll just equal that. So the theory goes, if I added up the first 20 numbers, 
it would just be 20 on 2 multiplied by 60 minus 5. And our mathematical induction is to prove that it works for every single value of n. So we can prove that it works for 20 just by doing it, and then we can prove that it works for 30 just by doing it. But does, just because it works for 20 and 30, does it mean that it's going to work for 31 or 40 or something like that? So this is the scenario of mathematical induction is to prove it. So you can think of that as determining what those numbers are going to be. Yeah, for any value of n, if that makes sense. So that's a, a sequence in itself. That defines this sequence. Okay. So that's what we're doing. And now we need to take a breath and go, there's a specific way that maths people want you to do a mathematical induction. And it relies on a few assumptions, but that's all right. It's just a process. Okay, so the first thing is going to be three steps and don't, there is a word example in your book. And I'm going to not write everything up here because I just don't have the time or will. The basis step is the first step. Step one, we're going to confirm that that works for one value of n. We're going to select the value of n and hope that it works. What's the easiest value of n we can think of? Thanks, Clint. So if you've got a choice, we're going to work with small numbers. So exactly what I just rubbed off, the basis means I'm going to take my left-hand side, which is this side, and work out when there's one term, let's add them all up. So if i is 1, it's the first term, so it's going to be 3 times 1 minus 4. 3 minus 4 is, can you remember us getting that last, before I rubbed it off? The right hand side is I'm going to put 1 in here. Equals. Um, it equals negative 1. So we can say that that equals the left hand side, so the right hand side equals the left hand side. So we've proved that that's true for n equals 1. Done, Skip. So we're going to assume it's true for n equals k. That's a big assumption, isn't it? But that's okay, that's what we this it relies on that assumption. So at n equals k, we're going to assume from 1 to k, not 1 to 2 or 1 to 3, you know how we did 3 or 4 terms, that's from term 1 to 4, to, from term 1 to 5, we're going to go from 1 to k of 3i minus 4. This k becomes that n, so it's k on 2. So that's our assumption, we're going to need that way. We are then going to go, well we want to show it's true, k plus 1. Because if we can confirm that it's true for k plus 1, then it's true for any number, because k can be any number. It's alright, it's just a process. After you do it, do it a thousand times, it'll be true. So, to show that it's true for n equals to k plus 1, we need to prove that that's true where n equals k plus 1. So here, the, see the k when in here, where the n is? So I'm going to go... A plus one. So that's what I'm needing to prove. I'm wanting to prove that. I just want to simplify this. Uh, so that's going to be 3k plus 3 minus 5. What's 3 minus 5? Minus 2. And 
Let's see how we go. 3a squared minus 2k plus 3k minus 2 equals 3. So I need to show that that equals that. That's my target. If I can do that, that's what we do, because that's what I need to do to show equals k plus 1. I'm going to have to leave this here. I'm going to rub out all that working. And not leave myself much room. Okay. Think about it like this. Here's term one, here's term two, here's term three, here's term four, here's term k, and here's term k plus one. See this thing here? That's the sum of all numbers. So the sum from 1 to 3 is the, all those added together. That's the 4. That's the k. So I'm going to say that the sum of all of them is going to be equal to the sum of all of them plus that last term. Again, it's a bit of a step and you need to do it a couple of times for it to go in, but that's the theory. And we'll do it again later. So I'm going to say clearly the sum of all of them will be equal to the sum to k plus term k plus 1. This is where the assumption comes in, because guess what? That is that. So my next line is, if I'm assuming that to be true, I'm going to put that in here. And then add the k plus 1 term well, that's the thing that defines the term, so it's going to be 3 plus 1 minus 4. So that's that, and that's when that i, the iteration of the k plus first iteration. Our challenge is to get that to this. This is my target, because you can see the left hand side is exactly what we're going to prove. And we've got to get the right hand side that to equal that. And once we've done that, we're coming home. So let's put this on two and expand brackets. 3k squared minus 5k on two. So that's that. Plus, I've just expanded the brackets. 3k plus 3 minus 4. 3 minus 4. Minus one. I want a denominator of two, don't I? So it's all the answer, but I'm so how do I go? So that would be a two, and that would be a six. And that vinculum joins, doesn't it? So I'm gonna combine my terms. What's six K minus five K? Can you see that that and that are the same? Very tall. So what do we say next? QED. And that means... So that just means done. And we like that, don't we? Yes. Because that means T. So we have just proved... <laughs> this was our target. And we proved that it's right. 
Therefore, we, we prove that for any value of n, think of one, a million, two million, infinity, that that will always get the sum of all the values. Did we like that? Mm -hmm. Tours, does it get easier? Yes. yes.